Hey everybody, this is Rust Metro Game Core, and this weird looking thing right here is a new dock that we're going to be reviewing here in this video. And it's made by 8 the folks behind some of my favorite third party controllers. Well, the ironic thing here is this dock is not made for those third party controllers. Instead, it's made for Xbox controllers. And this dock works as a wireless charging solution for both the Xbox Series controllers as well as the more recent Xbox One controllers. And in addition to the dock itself, it does come with its own battery packs as well as battery covers so that it'll work with the dock. And so it's kind of a neat and convenient way to charge your favorite Xbox controllers. Now you can pick this up either through their website or via Amazon. And it comes in two different colors, either black or white, and it has European, British, and American standard charging as well. The dock itself is going to set you back $45, but on their Amazon listing they also have additional battery packs for $15 each. And so if you wanted to charge more than two controllers, you'd want to pick up an extra battery pack. So let's go ahead and do a deep dive review of this charging dock for Xbox controllers. Okay, quick disclosure here, 8 sent this out for review, no money was exchanged and all opinions are my own. Inside the box is super simple, you have the dock itself, a quick instruction manual that'll show you how to install the battery, and then we have a charging cable, battery pack, and four different battery covers. The reason why they provide four is because they have two of each, so you have some for the Xbox Series controller, and that's the one labeled 2020 and above. You additionally have one that's labeled Xbox Bluetooth controllers. These are going to be your Xbox One controllers that added Bluetooth sometime around like 2018 or so. And then additionally, we have two different battery packs. These are 1100 milliamp hours, and they're going to give you about 20 hours of gameplay per charge. And so here's a look at the charging adapter. It is using the standard 5 volt 1 amp, but it does have an L-shaped barrel plug. I would have preferred to have USB-C, but we'll talk more about that later. And so when it comes to compatibility, we're going to test it against two different controllers. The first one here is an Xbox Series S or X controller. Now thankfully, this one has a white cover as well, so the battery pack should look pretty good here. And I just got this controller a couple weeks ago. As you can see, it's still has the pack-in batteries. Anyway, hooking this up is super simple. Just make sure the metal connector is facing out, and then be sure to use the correct cover for your controller. It's a pretty tight fit, but yeah, it works. I will say the white color here is a little bit darker than the white on my controller, and so unfortunately it's not a perfect color match. But otherwise it looks a lot like the original one, it even has the Xbox logo, and yeah, it powers on just fine. Next, let's take a look at my old Xbox One Bluetooth controller. I picked this one up around 2018, 2019, and I used to use this a lot to stream games to my iPad. Installation is going to be exactly the same. We're going to add the battery pack, and then we also want to make sure that we add the correct cover. Now, obviously, I'm replacing a blue cover with a white one, but it actually looks pretty good here anyway. Thankfully, the controller is mostly white already. But yeah, this one works fine. It powers up as well. So now let's take a look at the dock itself, and first impressions here, it is very lightweight. In fact, it's only 300 grams, or about 10 ounces altogether. It has this transparent and slightly reflective kind of motif to it, and so let's go ahead and plug it in and get a feel for what the lighting is going to be like. And yeah, I would say it looks pretty cool while it's charging a controller like this. And the light will turn off once it's done charging or when you remove the controller. And you can also adjust the brightness of the light, we'll do that here later in the video. And so overall, I do like the look here, it has a nice warm amber glow to it. And this is actually the brightest setting here. The top has a touch sensor, and when you tap on it, it'll toggle through the three different brightness modes. And so depending on how dimly lit everything is, you can adjust this to your liking. Now, in addition to this dock, 8 sent me just a bunch of other stuff, so let's go through those real quick. We have a Zero Two controller, which I've showed previously on this channel. They also sent a couple of their upgraded wireless dongles here. This will allow you to connect things like an Xbox or a DualShock controller to more consoles. For example, it'll work with a Nintendo Switch. So we'll test this out a little bit later in the video. They also sent over this Light 2 gamepad. I've been actually meaning to test this one out, and so I'll do a different video on this one here. I really like the look of this one, but I do have some hesitation about the ergonomics, so we'll do a different video on this one. And finally, they also sent over a pink version of their Ultimate Wired Controller for Xbox. Now I already did a full review of this one a couple months back, and I'll leave that in the video description. I will say hands down this is the controller I use for a lot of my PC game testing. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so back to the dock here, let's go ahead and look at it in a more horizontal angle like this. And as you can see, you just pop the controller right in and it'll start charging. And each side is going to light up independently depending on whether or not the controller is being charged. Also, here's a look at the different brightness profiles in a lit room. And so as you can see on the lowest setting in a lit room, it's almost impossible to tell that it's even charging. And so you're likely going to want to adjust that depending on your ambient lighting in the room. And so yes, nothing really special to show when it comes to actually playing games here. This is really just going to be a charging solution. 
But a couple notes here in case you were wondering. Number one is when you pull the controller off of the dock, it's not like it's going to wake up your device. It's literally the equivalent of removing a charging cable from your controller. And so it's the exact same process here, but without any wires. And then the other note to make is it takes about three hours to fully charge that controller. Like I mentioned previously, the output here is only five volts, one amp, and that's spread between two different controllers. And so while it's probably better for long-term battery use to give it a trickle charge like that, it's not gonna work like a fast charger. But of course, if you had two controllers, you could charge one while playing and then charge the other while you're using the other one. And like I mentioned, the battery life is about 20 hours. So you're gonna get a good amount of gameplay time in here on a single charge anyway. And while I have all my Xbox stuff out, let's go ahead and test out these wireless adapters as well. And the setup for this couldn't be simpler. All you have to do is just take off the cap here and then plug it into USB on your Nintendo Switch dock. From there, you do need to make one settings change within the Nintendo Switch. You have to go into system settings and then controllers and sensors, and then turn on the pro controller wired communication. It's gonna give you a warning here about using the amiibo with this controller, but I would just go ahead and ignore that. After that, there's a little button on the adapter. You just tap on that and then the connector on the Xbox controller itself. After a second, it's gonna register it as the Nintendo Switch pro controller. And so yes, here I am using an Xbox series controller on the Nintendo Switch. It is a little bit odd to use a Nintendo Switch style control scheme on an Xbox controller, but it works just fine. And this kind of setup can be used for other devices like a Botocera machine or an Android TV box. And so if you're having Bluetooth connectivity issues with your Xbox or DualSense controller, this adapter might give you that extra leg up. Anyway, the pairing of this adapter plus the dock here gives you a pretty premium experience if you wanted to play Xbox controllers on a Switch. And of course, without the adapter, you can just use this with your Xbox as well. Now, before we start wrapping up, here's a comparison against the other dock solution that 8 provides. This one here is the ultimate wireless controller. This is a third party controller, but as you can see, it has a much smaller dock. Obviously this is made for only one controller at a time and it has limited use in the fact that it doesn't work with an Xbox, but it is quite smaller. And one last note here, just to be thorough, these are not interchangeable. So you're not gonna be able to use an Xbox controller with the ultimate dock and vice versa with the controller in the Xbox dock. I'm not sure if you'd ever have a use case where you would wanna use that anyway, but hey, it's always good to check. Okay, and so wrapping things up here, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about this dock. To start, the experience is pretty fun. You can just drop your controller right into the dock and it gives a satisfying click when it goes into place. I also like these amber colored indicator lights as well. It gives you a good idea whether or not the controller is still charging or whether it's ready to start gaming. I also appreciate that the dock is somewhat backwards compatible. Instead of just focusing on the current Xbox series generation, this one will also work with the Xbox One controllers that have Bluetooth compatibility. And so this dock is gonna work with any Xbox controller that's really been released over the past five years or so. And then finally, I think this is a pretty nice starter solution. For example, if you just got started with Xbox gaming and you were using AA batteries, this could be a good solution. Because in addition to the wireless charging dock, you will also get those battery packs that'll be very handy. Now, of course, this thing is not perfect, so let's talk about some of the things that I didn't like about it. Number one, it feels pretty bulky for what it does, especially when you compare it against the dock for the Ultimate Controller. And maybe it's just my own play style, but there's rarely a time when I need to be charging two controllers at once. And so honestly, a very similar solution to the Ultimate Wireless Controller dock that they already have would have been really great for this controller too. Additionally, I'm not a huge fan of how reflective the dock is itself. I personally prefer subdued designs when it comes to products, and so this one's just a little bit flashy for my tastes. And additionally, I do think that this dock configuration is a little bit limited. It would have been really neat if other controllers would also have been compatible with this dock. I realize from a hardware perspective, it's probably hard to get them all to line up, but if they had been able to figure that out, that would have been pretty cool to be able to pop in your other 8 controllers into that same dock as well. And finally, this one's a little bit weird, but I found that the cable itself is just a little bit too short for my liking. It measures out at just over three feet, three feet and four inches to be precise. And in my various times that I was testing it over the past week, there were many times where I found it to be too short. In the end, I wish they had engineered it so that it had a USB type C plug instead. If they had done that, then you would have been able to use your own cable in case you needed a longer length. As it stands right now with this barrel plug, you're limited to the three feet and four inches unless you wanna get a specialized adapter. Another factor when it comes to the limited use case is that there may not be so many people that this would appeal to. There's gonna be a lot of factors involved in order to make this a good fit. Number one, not only does it need to be an Xbox charging solution specifically, but you are limited to only two types of controllers, the Xbox series as well as the Xbox One. 
Another factor when it comes to the limited use case of this dock are the specific parameters that are going to work best with it. So in addition to requiring you to have two Xbox controllers that need charging, the $45 price point only makes sense if you also need battery packs as well. And so if you're a longtime Xbox user and you already have some battery packs that you've bought in previously, then this may not be a good fit. And so unfortunately, this overall limited use case just kind of narrows down the segment of people that would be interested in it in the first place. And so in the end, what do I think of this 8 Xbox dock? Well, to start, I think it has an appealing look to it. I like the amber charging light, and it's definitely a unique design. And so I think it would look pretty cool if you had it, say, on your table or next to your TV. But at the same time, I do think it's a little bit bulkier than it should be, especially when you compare it to the other recent release from 8 Doe. The dock on their third-party Ultimate controller here just seems to be a better fit. But of course, if you're already in the Xbox ecosystem and you don't already have some sort of dock solution or a charging battery pack, then I think all told this package might be worth considering. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a use case that would be fitting for you or is something else better? As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.